Hi everyone, I'm Ivan and welcome to my talk. I know how hard it can be when your company is growing quickly and your teams are growing quickly as well. You have to evolve your Jira to suit your team's changing needs. But before I begin, let's start with a game. The game is called, Have You Ever? I'll tell you about three customers that I have interviewed and the problems that they faced. Reflect if it has ever happened to you too. Have you ever needed different levels of details in Jira for different audiences? Like Annie, a product manager of a supply chain data management company. You didn't want to confuse your audience or worse, annoy them with things that they don't care about. This is especially important since Jira is known to be scary and complex and you are a Jira advocate. Have you ever ran sprints with an external service provider and you're dependent on their timelines? Like Brian, a development manager of an SMS service provider. You're using an integration of a company a lot bigger than yours, and it takes ages to get things done on their side due to their big company processes. You need a way to track their work separately as it doesn't gel well with your team's velocity. Have you ever been at the beginning of a sprint and the design work was not fully ready? Like Jason, a product manager of an Italian venture builder. Your front-end developers tell you that they can't estimate the design's story points, which blocks your team's velocity. You need a way to track design work separately, but not in a sprint, as four weeks is too long for the startup world. In this talk, I'll be helping you shape your Jira to solve the customer problems that I just mentioned and more. I've been working as a product manager in Jira software in the last four years, and I've learned some insights and best practices for being agile at scale that I'm excited to share with you. I'll start by showing you how the world of teams is changing before going deep into how Jira software can adapt to the way that teams work. Am I correct to say that all of us want to do a great job to plan, prioritize work, and manage dependencies? Scaling agile for visibility across different teams and work streams at a company have introduced new challenges because of the land changing landscape of how teams work. We are seeing organizational structures changing to break down silos and complicated hierarchies. Companies are focusing less on the organizational hierarchy for working and moving towards a hybrid model. Work gets done by smaller cross-functional teams spanning organizational boundaries to tackle a big problem. Management may try to steer the autonomous teams without passing down decisions or dictating work. They do this by educating the teams on the high-level strategic direction, business constraints, and product principles for teams to work within. Besides the change to the hybrid model of hierarchy and autonomy, we have seen work trends evolve in the last year. According to the Gartner Industry Report on Future Work Trends, work are more distributed than ever before. Teams have to become agile in order to keep pace with fast-changing market trends and almost everything gets tracked these days in a bid to be informed. Put all of this together with a fast growing company and chaos begins. Now that we know how the landscape is changing, now let's see how a single team evolves to an enterprise. When a single team is using Jira software to manage development projects, things are still not that chaotic. As the teams start scaling to a team of teams, complexity arises with visualizing and tracking work as interdependencies increase. Teams need to understand how work contributes to the bigger picture and inform many more stakeholders on their progress. They may also have to frequently replan due to changes internally and externally. If the team of teams are able to sustain their agility to transform to become an enterprise, You've got a winner. Visibility of the work is key at all these different stages, but gets harder as the company grows. Now that we have seen how the world of teams work, let's take a look at our options for visualizing and tracking work in Jira software. 
We are going to focus on understanding the needs of the majority of our customers today, which are single teams and team of teams. In Jira software, there are three ways to visualize your work. We are going to review quickly what boards are optimized for and work our way up to advanced roadmaps. Jura is super flexible, so you can customize it any way for visualizing and tracking work, but some ways may be better suited than others for certain team needs. Boards are optimized for the team members that are doing all the work and better suited for tracking work at the team level. Roadmaps caters to the product or engineering manager so that they can organize and plan at the team level. Advanced Roadmaps, a Jira Premium feature, optimizes in helping program managers for a company's entire department organize and plan work for multiple teams as they need greater coordination. The key value of Jira is to break work down using the different levels of issue hierarchy. At the lowest level are stories and subtasks, which will be under issues called epics. Epics are very big user stories that will take a couple of sprints to finish. Before we had roadmaps, there was no easy way to do higher level epic planning. The backlog had to handle all the planning work, breaking down of epics and prioritization of issues. This led to a very busy backlog. After we introduced roadmaps, it became better suited for planning epics at the team level. Plan features can graduate to the roadmap as an epic or to the backlog as a story. They will then end up on the board view when prioritized for the coming weeks. Of course, the backlog continues to have value for sprint planning and backlog grooming. Advanced roadmaps is better suited for issues like initiatives. There is a level higher than epics in the issue hierarchy. Initiatives are work that may take a couple of months or even quarters and may involve more than one team working together. Initiatives and beyond are useful because they can help align work to the bigger picture. Now that we know at a high level what visualizations are possible in Jira software, I'll be focusing on how to make your board powerful. You can learn more about roadmaps and advanced roadmaps in other Jira software product demos. You may be asking, is it still possible for me to visualize and track work across teams and work streams in Jira software on boards? The answer is yes. Although boards are meant for the team level, but the amazing thing is that you can still use it for a team of teams. Let's see how boards work for a team of teams. I will also share some tips and tricks on how to set them up. There are two main ways to track work across multiple teams and work streams on boards. Multiple boards within a Jira project and cross project boards. Setting boards up for your teams properly from the start is really important because it's like renovating for your new house. Your furniture is like your board's data and your family is like your team. You want to renovate your house properly before everyone moves in so that you don't have to renovate with all your furniture inside or worse, disrupt your family when they're living inside already. For the multiple boards use case, there are three main ones. Firstly, a team may need a board for discovery work where they refine, design, and analyze work and another board for the development sprint for engineering tasks. There are multiple ways that you can slice up your work into different boards, not just for discovery and development work. It could be different teams or different products. You could also be tracking work on features versus performance versus bugs. You could also be tracking work according to the skill sets of the team, such as product versus design versus development. Secondly, the workflow needs to be connected across boards, such that an issue that's gone through different boards will track the issue status changes as a system of record throughout. Lastly, different workflow rules and board configurations are needed per board due to the agile ceremonies and team needs for each board. This is a real life workflow that a customer drew up for me in Mural that represents these use cases. At the top, you can see how he wants the issue to flow through a preparation board and then an execution board. At the bottom, 
you can see that the issue statuses for each bot will change as the issue moves through the different stages of the work. How do we achieve what the customer showed me? To do that, you need the right column status mapping. Column status mapping is when you map issue statuses to bots columns in order to control what issues show up on your bot and backlog. You need to map different issue statuses to each bots column in order to reflect the different kinds of work. As you can see here, you can pull the issue statuses you don't want to the unmapped status panel so that they're not mapped to the columns on your board. You can do this in the columns page within board settings. However, you need to make sure that there's a shared issue status mapped to the last column of the first board and the first column of the second board. This enables a card to be transitioned seamlessly across the boards. How does that work in practice? Let's say you have an issue in design review. As you move it to ready for dev, the status changes. At the same time, the issue appears on the second board due to the shared issue status across boards. When the issue moves to the in progress column in the development board, it will disappear from the preparation board because there's no longer a shared issue status across boards. At the same time, the status of the issue changes to in progress. Now, the history of your issue status changes will record all the different status changes as they travel through as many boards as you want. Isn't that amazing? If you don't need separate project configurations, you can use this method to track multiple bots that are sharing the same project configuration. Secondly, you can utilize labels and automation for Jira to automatically transition issues upon issue creation into the right bot. Automation for Jira can be set up in your project settings under automation. By doing that, whenever you create an issue, it will flow straight into the bot it's supposed to be in. Save time by automating away all the manual work. Thirdly, you can set up different workflow transition rules for the different bots with different issue statuses. You can go into your workflow editor to modify the transition rules as you can see over here. Since each bot has different issue statuses mapped to it, it will allow different transition rules since the workflow rules are tied to the issue statuses. For example, the designer on your team is likely to need a very different workflow than your engineers. Design work needs a different cadence to explore all the possibilities before locking in the final designs. By doing this, you have very different workflow processes configured for the different types of bot for different members of your team. This way, your team will be happy that you understand their needs and are able to configure the bots the way that they work. Lastly, since workflow rules are configured based on issue type per project, you could set up different transition rules for epic issue type compared to a story or a subtask. This will make sure all bots within the same project will have the same rules per issue type. In this example, your epics may be blocked by the bigger dependencies in the business, so you can make sure that it's reflected in your issue status. On the other hand, you may need more stages for stories and subtasks, such as QA and automated tasks. Isn't it great that your stories and subtasks will always meet your definition of done before shipping to production? You can make sure that it must transition to the right statuses for different issue types so no stones are left unturned. Now that you have learned how to set up multiple bots via column status mapping, automation for Jira, and workflow transition rules, Let's look at cross-project bots. This is because you may want some of your bots to be pulling issues from multiple projects and not just one. Your teams may need an overview bot to prioritize and track tasks across all teams and Jira projects. This is somewhat similar to advanced roadmaps, but at a more granular level. I imagine some team leaders or executives may want this level of granularity for prioritization's sake, or for a more clear indication of the work's status. A developer may also be working on multiple work streams in parallel, so there may be a need to have a bot for all the developer, developer's work that cuts across many different Jira projects or bots. Also, we see that cross-project bots may be popular with consultancies. Client will be scoped to a different Jira project because of security reasons. 
However, team members may be shared and working across projects. So there's a need for a cross-project board so they can prioritize what your team member is working on. Any tips that I have for cross-project boards to serve these needs? You can easily create a cross-project board that has the visibility that you need. You can go to the issue navigator, as you can see here in your project, but you can switch to the basic mode to create the bot filter with the right JQL. JQL represents Jira querying language. What this means is that you won't need to know how to write JQL to create bots that you need. As you can see here, it's very easy. Just click on the drop-down menu, save your filter, name the filter for the bot, which is a cross-project bot, choose who can view this particular bot as well as who can modify this particular bot. Now that you know how to create your cross-project bot, how do you prioritize your tasks in a global context? The easiest way to do that is using quick filters, where you can filter the highest priority tasks from all your projects during master screen planning across projects. Here you see the highest priority issues filtered visibly through the priority field when you activate the urgent quick filter. You can create a quick filter in your bot settings called urgent using a simple jQL as shown here which filters for you to see only the highest priority issues from the different projects. After getting your priorities right, don't you want a quick way of checking the status of each task by project on your bot view? You can do that by grouping your issues by project on your bot view using swim lanes, as you can see here. Here you can see the cat boost project swim lane first, followed by Kiki, Moro, and Totoro projects. You can set that up easily in your bot settings by basing your swim lanes on projects. To recap, you have learned how to set up cross-project bots using the issue navigator, track high priority tasks in a global context using quick filters, and group by project on the bot view using swim lanes. In conclusion, I'd like to go back to the game that we played at the start of the talk. I asked you, have you ever needed different levels of details in Jira for different audiences, like any? Have you ever ran sprints with an external service provider and you're dependent on their timelines like Brian? And have you ever been at the beginning of a sprint and the design work was not fully ready like Jason? Based on what I've shown you, do you know how to solve your team's problems by setting up your bots in the best possible way? The answer is a big yes. Thank you for listening and I hope that you enjoyed this talk.